and my name is Sun Yining, and you may call me Elaine. And this is my <coughs> paper title, A Novel Efficient Coding Scheme for Data Rate Limited Journey Over Graph Data Transmission. And uh, this is my outline. And I will give you a, a short introduction that why I want to do this research. And then I will tell you our new scheme code structure. And after I uh, give you the introduction of the code structure, I will tell you the transmission and the partition about adjacency matrix and our new scheme. And then I will give you the conclusion. Before I uh, present my paper, I want everyone to think about a question. I believe everyone oh, is not really, really clear. Uh, I believe everyone is familiar with this kind of map, a Google map, right? If you are a driver, you will use it. However, if you are a driver, it is really necessary for you to have this kind of map. Of course, however, you only need to highlight the important information for you. Yes, if you want to uh, drive from A to B, you only need to know the path. Actually, you don't need to have a lot of these kind of things. So how can we transmit a graph? Uh, in the best of my knowledge, I didn't find any protocol that they are designed to transmit a graph. And that a graph is a, in the mathematic definition is constructed by the node and h. Okay? So how to transmit a graph? This is the first question. And if we can transmit a graph, what kind of exiting technique can we use? And if we cannot, or if the exiting technique is really inefficient, how can we construct a new one? So this is uh, our topic today. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, this green, green node is the extra node in this picture. Actually, this node is not, not actually in this map. Uh, this is just an extra node that I want to describe a curve. Because in a matrix, actually, you want to uh, if you want to transmit a graph, you can construct a matrix. However, the matrix cannot tell you which kind of the edge is a curve, right? It can only tell you uh, which nodes it connect together. So this is a problem for the matrix if you want, if you want to transmit a graph. Okay? So we uh, create a new, uh, new thing. Sorry, we didn't, well, we didn't give the name of this skin, so we call it our new skin. Okay? And this new skin is extended from the software-defined multiplacing code. And if you are interested in it, you may find this paper. It is published at 2015. And uh, our new skin code structure, we need to give them the left delimiter and right delimiter and separator to construct our data unit. In our new skin, uh, each node will have their own data unit. And it is constructed like that. And this, is, this means a uh, node U that uh, their corresponding connect node in will uh, record at this kind of structure. And how can we describe a node? It is really easy because it is on the map, so you can use coordinate to represent it. And you are confused, uh, if you are confused in those two tables, you may see this structure. I give you an example. If you want to construct a data unit of this red node U, you may construct this kind of structure and put the information in it. Uh, you need to put the information of U, means you need to put X coordinate and Y coordinate. And then you need to put to their connecting node after that. And the order, uh, which kind of order you want to put that is OK. OK, so if you construct it and you want to transmit their coordinates, you will become like that. So this is the data unit for node U. And you may see here is a dash one dash. Uh, this is the technique according to the previous work. So if you want to know, you may check it. And why we need to put it? Because you need to use this to let the decoder decode to the right information. If you don't use stuff, you may get the wrong information. Okay, okay if you construct a node, uh, we still need to construct a length, uh, a edge for a curve. How can we construct an edge for a curve? Here, you may put a descriptor after the node that you want to describe more. Maybe you can describe a curve, or it has accident, or maybe something uh, it has a heavy track, something like that. This is depends on you. 
uh, how can you do it? You just need to use a delimiter to tell the receiver that here are some information about this node. Okay? And uh, we use an example that we want to tell the receiver this edge is a curve. So we may add some control points, that means uh, extra points, to describe it. And you may just put it like that. And if you are confused, of course I uh, use an example to tell you. Uh, this is the same as that uh, uh, no you I tell you about. However, here, this is a curve. And I tell you that this green node is not, is not on the map. So we just add extra node on it. Okay, so if I want to tell the receiver it is a nerve, of course I can use a control point to tell him that this kind, this, this node is connected by non-straight line. Okay, so we use this to construct it. And after we have the coordinates, we may translate it to the bit format. So now we can construct a graph by our structure, and then uh, all, you, uh, all nodes have their own data you need. So now we can think about how to transmit those data you need. Okay? And why we want to talk, talk about this transmission and partition? Transmission, of course, this is the topic of my paper. Why the partition? It is because the data rate. If the data rate is large enough, of course, you can transmit the whole adjacency matrix or whole R scheme in the same time. However, um, actually the graph will be tremendous. So you need to uh, separate or you need to cut the map to transmit a lot of time that you can get the whole map you want. Okay? So um, because adjacency matrix cannot describe the curve, so we set up a mesh grid that uh, adjacency matrix can accurately describe a graph, okay? So we use a match grid, which means uh, just like that. Each edge is, uh, mm. is used the straight line, and no is like that, and we call this M by M match grid, okay? And now, uh, we want to discuss the transmission times, okay? So we think about one thing. If, suppose we random permutation the index for each node, and the data rate is not big enough. I have a question now. If I want to find the subgraph G plot, how many transmission times do I need to have for the adjacency matrix and our scheme? Okay, here is an example. If I have an M by M mesh grid, and it will transmit this information or the color information for each node, and I want to get this kind of subgraph, how many transmission times do adjacency matrix and our scheme need to use? How many times? So in this paper, uh, we give the uh, we derive their transmission times here. This is the transmission times, uh, expected transmission time for the adjacency matrix, and the proof is really long, so I didn't show it here. And the transmission time for our new scheme is here. Okay. So after we have a theoretical result for the expected transmission times, we can have some simulate. Okay, uh, and our simulator is used the uh, numerical evaluation. It is not a real world. <coughs> okay, we use MATLAB to evaluate it. So uh, this is the real, real average transmission time. That is, we use the uh, we use thousand rounds for the adjacent metric and our scheme and give the average, and then we have the ratio. And next, uh, this is the this is from the equation that we talked be, uh, before. So we create a new ratio for it. So we may find that that uh, if this ratio is bigger than one, it means uh, the adjacency matrix transmission times are bigger than our new scheme. Okay. So we show the uh, uh, the result like here. Okay. And you can see that um, since all the ratio is bigger than one. So the adjacency matrix always have need to use more transmission times than our new scheme. Okay? And we may also think, I think this is close, so we may use our new scheme to estimate the real transmission times. Okay. And next, uh, in this paper, we are focused on transmission and also about the journey aware, okay? which means there is a mobile device need to move and we need to construct <coughs> a graph for it. Okay. And here we first study about the uh, uh, scheduling. Since uh, in the previous 
in my talk, I use the random permutation to index each node. However, you can see that if uh, the closer node information are important than the far nodes, so we hope that we can get a, a closer node first. So we use the scheduling, we use the schedule, and it is depends on the distance to the center and other node. Okay, uh, we propose the algorithm. And it is hard to read, so I use the I use a graph to show it. Suppose uh, the mobile device is at VC uh, center, okay, and you may scheduling by the uh, distance. So we I show the five priority in this table instance, okay, and first the first priority is highlighted by the red. So these four four nodes have the same priority, so you may index these four first, and then second, and then third, and so on, okay? So uh, the index is now not the random permutation. We now use the scheduling to index them, so we may get the information we want, okay? Uh, first, uh, the most important information we want, okay? And now, if the mobile device is moving, how can we use this algorithm? So we now set up the mobile device are moving and it is traveling on a road and will receive a new data stream when it approaches an intersection. So which means the center will update when the mobile device is moving. Okay? And here is algorithm. And I also used a picture to show it. Here, suppose uh, this is the same picture I just showed you before. Suppose the device, uh, the, uh, the mobile device is at here. And I use the scheduling, I, and I index all the nodes. And then according to the data rate, I can receive, uh, the mobile device can receive the star nodes. Okay? And after it receives the star node, it has approached to the next node here. And then we use the same thing that, oh, sorry, here. After the mobile device re, uh, approach here, it need to update their uh, its center, so it use the scheduling again. Okay, and you can see since the mobile re uh, so since the mobile device have received this two node, so in this scheduling, the mobile device doesn't need to consider about these two nodes for the first priority because the mobile device has already received the information of this. So if you have received the information of the nodes, you don't need to consider at the next time, okay? So uh, the same, after scheduling, after consider about the data rate, you, uh, the mobile device can, uh, uh, I, I set up that this mobile device can receive those star nodes again, and it, it uh, go to a next node, and then use it again and again, okay? And after the mobile device, uh, arrive here and then it stop. Here come a, a new question. That is, how many information can this mobile device receive? How many? So uh, the information of the graph contains two things: is node and age. So we need to consider about the nodes and age together, so we can get the information. So if if we want to consider the age and the nodes together, we need to give a new definition, that is we use a k-hub be the information of the node will receive, uh, of the mobile device will receive. Here we set up the definition as if there is a path which starts at node u and is composed by k different connected edges, the path is a k-hub of u. Okay, if this is difficult, I give a picture, an example. Set up the u at here. For this u, it has four one hub, that is north, uh, west, south, east, okay? It composed by different, so it composed by one and one is like that, okay? And if the two hub, two hub means if you want to go to the uh, next, uh, uh, composed by two different connect edge, it can go to one, two. So this is two hub, a uh, one, two, that is uh, one kind of two hub and one, two, another kind, and another kind. So it contains 12 two hubs of U. So if we give this definition, we can use uh, this kind of information to find out 
uh, how many information for the mobile device can receive, okay? And we want to consider about the percentage because it's, it is clear for, uh, for a user to see. Okay, so we set up this. This is a whole, uh, whole K-Hub for node you can, receive, uh, can have, not receive. This is the real receive number for the mobile device can have. So if we, uh, if we divide the total number that uh, no you actually have, we can have the percentage. So for example, uh, the, same, uh, the same example as, as I talked. Uh, since this node you have 12 K hubs for, uh, for it. However, uh, after the mobile device approach here, it only have 10 to hub. Why? Because actually, now you have a, another hub is here, one, uh, one, two. So this is a kind of two hub for node you. However, this node you, uh, this, uh, after the mobile device come to here, it didn't have the information of this node. So it cannot construct a two hub for this, this path. And the same, this mobile device cannot construct uh, one hub for this because it didn't receive this information. So we can have the, percent uh, the percentage of this, this graph. That is, uh, if a mobile device arrive here, and then uh, it can have a, uh, this 10 to 12 ratio for the uh, two hub, okay? And if you know the K hub, and what is the uh, percentage of K hub on average from here to here? So we give a new, a new <coughs> definition that is average K hub completeness. That is, uh, if the mobile device is moving from the start and to the end, on average, how many percentage of information can this mobile device receive? Okay. So here, uh, if the mobile device start at here, the percentage is, uh, the two hop percentage is this. And after it approach here, the percentage is like that. And then at the end, the percentage is like that. And we sum, uh, and we sum them and give the average. So we can have the average percentage, okay? So this is the average, uh, average result for the mobile device when it starts from V1 to V3. Okay. So we use a whole, uh, a whole uh, sorry, we use an equation to present a whole journey aware of the information that it can get. Okay. So, and we use a numerical evaluation, evaluation for the, this map. This is a LA sunset. Okay. And in this Google map, why we choose this Google, uh, why we choose this map? It is because it, isn't, it didn't con contain any curve, so it can construct by adjacency matrix and our new skin. Okay, so you can see I just highlight all the information you need, and we set up the mobile device start from here and to here. So after the mobile device arrive here, how many information can the mobile de device receive from the adjacency matrix and our new skin? So here is our <coughs> here is our simulation. As you can see, um, our new skin will have uh, will always better than the adjacency matrix. And why this happen? It is because there are too many nodes in this picture. Which means if you want to construct an adjacency matrix for this graph, you will need to use a large, very very large matrix. So if you want to transmit a really mm. large matrix, which means each column is really long. So if there are a long, a, long in the, uh, a long element for a column, of course you need to use a lot of transmission for the adjacency matrix. However, our new skin didn't contain any kind of, uh, uh, we will not have the redundancy for some, some, uh, for some node. For example, the adjacency matrix will have the information about this node and this node. However, they are not, they didn't connect to together. So in our new skin, we will, we will don't need to transmit this kind of redundancy. So our new skin will be efficient. So back to this, uh, if the matrix is small, 
and the graph is complicated, the adjacency matrix will have a bad, uh, a best uh, performance than ours. Since we choose this, so our performance is better than it. Yeah. Okay. So here is the conclusion. Uh, our new skin can enable fast topological complete subgrade re reconstruct over a huge two dimension. Oh, huge, we need, we focus on huge, okay? And given a fixed low data rate, our proposed new skin requires much fewer transmission than the adjacency matrix. Unless our new skin can lead to topology complete subgraphs in a much higher percentage than the adjacency matrix. <coughs> okay. And this is the end of my presentation. Mm -hmm.